Welcome to This Day in Baseball and our Daily Rewind. My name's Tom Hannon, and I'm your host. Today we're going to bring you the actual radio call of the 1935 World Series Game 6. The Detroit Tigers try to close out the Chicago Cubs. The, Chi- the Tigers are chasing their first World Series victory. This is their fifth trip to the series, and they had lost the previous four times, including to these Cubs in 1907 and 1908. Will the third time be the charm? Well, the Tigers are up three games to two, and they're hoping to uh, take this game on their home field of Navin Field, But, and I'm going to let you listen to that call. But before I do, I want you to know about this day in baseball. We have launched a new quiz page, and on this page, you will have many quizzes to test your baseball knowledge. One quiz you will find is Hall of Famer's middle names. What Hall of Famer's middle name is Trowbridge? Head over to thisdayinbaseball.com and see if you know. The World Series is on the air. Strike, where the Chicago Cubs and the Detroit Tigers are battling for the championship of the baseball world. The play-by-play descriptions of all the World Series games are brought to you again this year with the compliments of the Ford Motor Company, Mr. Henry Ford, Mr. Edsel Ford, and your local Ford dealer. These sponsors will be amply repaid if you get enjoyment from these broadcasts. We're about to go into the sixth and a very vital game in this World Series. And sitting out here since early this morning, wandering through the stands, and then coming back to his typewriter, has been that commentator who has greeted you at the start of our broadcast each day during this series. And again, I take great pleasure in presenting Bob Carter. Hello, everyone. Bob Carter speaking. And here we are, back again at Maven Field, Detroit. It's perhaps a little skinnier, the digestion just a little off, a little too tired, as it were. But the crowd is confident that the Tigers will bring to Detroit. Is confident that the Tigers will bring to Detroit its first World Series Bowl Championship since 1887, and that's a long, long time, ladies and gentlemen, a very long time. And Mickey Cochran is patting himself on the back for playing a hunch yesterday, using Steve Boy Row and us having Tommy Bridges in reserve to throw at the Cubs for the sixth game back in the Tigers' own lair. And why the Tigers feel confident can be put down to these reasons that the team needs but one more victory to clinch that title. And victory often hangs on such slender threads of an error, a hit, or a smart piece of base running. And secondly, Tommy Bridges has 60 teammates to victory in this playing field already in this series. Charlie Grimmel is hard put to find pitchers who can still stand up under the face. And although Lady Luck smiled and handed him the fifth game yesterday, she turned right around and strained the ligaments. And the throw of that great ball pitcher, Long Warnecki, which most likely will make him unavailable for services again this year. So Charlie was at the call out the veteran Larry Prince, the veteran fourth side of the pitch for the Cubs. Bridges has had three days left, and Larry's had only two. And then, of course, the Tigers, as we said, are back in their own home run. And the left field fence is short, even though it is guarded by a 30-foot wire fence, too. On the other hand, the Cubs go into the sixth game with the realization of the $100,000 beauty. Chuck Stein and Prince during that 21-game drive, which measured the Cubs' dependence of the senior league because he wasn't hitting, is out now this slump, and he's trapping the whole side with all his old times they got. Because when Stein hit, he hit. And the homer he snared Saturday went way up in the right field, beat the seats of Chicago, well nigh a 400-foot hit. And for seven straight years, he never was once under 300. And this bit of psychology may make the Cubs tough customers for the Detroit wrecking crew today. But by 11 a.m., the enthusiasm of the crowd here was tremendous. And even the feature stand staged a little impromptu contest, egged on by the band and its cheerleader as a tribute to the ball game. What you hear now over the loudspeaker system of the ballpark is the line-out being given for all the crowd around, but you'll have it in just a minute, and Hal's office will continue right on. The left field beat rights, of course, would let go a series of highly technical cheers, whereupon the right field beat the right through the air with the right food. Well, pay no favorites, the band would step around the right field and conduct the beat right there through the same cheering exercises, whereupon the left field spectators yelled with cat called and booed in counter derision. And this kept up for better than 45 minutes, and it really was very funny. Two great, solid banks of humanity, each trying to out-cheer and out the other. And the running fire of shouted banter between the two stands continued the whole morning. The willingness to cheer almost anything indicates perhaps the intense feeling that runs through this automobile town. And to them, the return of prosperity in general is indelibly tied up with the coming of Mickey Carson to the town as manager of the Tigers, and their sudden swift up the surge to the top flight of baseball. And in 
last two years as manager, Doctor has had two pennant winners, which is some feat in itself. And during those same two years, the payrolls of the city began to increase again. Pay and loaves grew fatter. The ranks of the unemployed thinned out, and the factory wheels hummed a happier and more cheerful tune. So Detroit came to look on its tigers with a sort of prosperity personified. And hence the noisy affection for everything these players do, the excitement and the hysteria. And it's the Tigers, who, by the way, got that nickname back in 1898 when the teams those days appeared on the field with orange and black striped stockings. If the Tigers take today's game, this town will certainly fall to go as cool as it did on Armistice Night. For those that remember that, they agree that that was one quite pitch blowout. But incidentally, thereby hangs a little interesting tale. And these games this year have caused a no more interesting figure than the 72-year-old veteran of baseball, Bob Allen, who owns the Knoxville franchise of the Southern League, but who managed the Tigers way back in 1897. Bob, it was with old Charlie Grimm, the company manager of the Pittsburgh, for $4,500. And the Pirates traded this then youngster, Frank, or rather this young youngster, Grimm, to the Cubs. But once, Bob Allen and John Navin, above little Frank, the owner of the present field, could have bought the Detroit franchise years ago for $12,500. But they actually turned it down. And now they took it and lost money. And that was before Detroit was the automobile center of the nation. And now you just got to listen to the roars from 45,000 close below us to realize how time changed as the years slipped by. There used to be a planing mill in White Field, where now it's beautiful green grass billiard like in its smooth surface. And before that, the place had been a brickyard. And Bob Allen tells me every so often in later years, bricks used to work up through the surface of the ground. And the umpires were then called time while the players went digging and picked them out and tossed them off the field. Such is the plebeian yet warm history of Nathan Field, too. And by the way, the men and the winners will cut between themselves as though another day's so If Detroit wins, each man will walk home tonight with $6,831 as his share of the series cash receipt. And if the Cubs suddenly accomplish the seeming impossible and tie up the series and maybe win tomorrow, they'll each get $6,574. The difference in the amount being accounted for. For the fact that the Tigers cut their melon 25 and a half times and the Cubs 26 and a half. But the course losers, if they be Tigers, will get $4,554 as against 4382 for the Cubs. And for that good old $2,000 bill we spoke of yesterday, the rough difference between winners and losers still dangles temptingly before the players. And at 11.45, quarter to 12, the Tiger team double out onto the field from their dugout off the third base. And he walks out in the bleacher seat, the crowd that reminds one not of baseball, but of football, with its excitement and its color, stood up all that as one man and feared fully a minute. It was a great welcome to the homecoming team. And I see there that the umpires are gathering around the plate, so the best thing for me to do is to turn the broadcast back to Hal Cotton, who's got the line up for you. Take it away, Hal. Thank you, Bob. And we do have the line up for today's ball game. So if you want to take them down, I know many of you people keep your scores. Here we go. There's a change in the Detroit lineup, so note it carefully. For the Tigers, Clifton, third baseman, is leading off. Clifton, third base. Cochran, shot. Geringer, second base. Goslin, left field. Fox, right field. Walker, center field. Rogel, shortstop. Owen, first base. And Bridges pitching. And now we pause while the band plays the national anthem. That means that we'll be on our way pretty soon. We finished that Detroit lineup here at the Chicago lineup. Chicago, of course, bat first. And perhaps we should have given the lineup first. Golan, left field. Herman, 
second base. Klein, right field. Hartnett, catching. Demery, center field. Cavaretta, first base. Hack, third base. Jurgis, shortstop. And Frank, the pitcher. The umpire, Ernie Quigley of the National League behind the plate. Bill McGowan of the American League at first base. Dolly Stark of the National League at second base. And George Moriarty of the American League at third base. Just the opposite of yesterday's reception when the uh, umpires were announced today here in Detroit. The announcement of Moriarty at third brought great cheers instead of the kidding that George got from the Chicago stand. But that is a different plan on things. And George is a former star and manager here in Tiger Land. He's been a photographer out there in the field taking a panoramic picture of this whole scene. He had the camera on a high tripod right out back at second base, and they, as they say, technically panned the park all the way around to get the entire crowd, and those pictures will be something that will go down in the history as a picture of one of the greatest crowds of the World Series. That's three feet occupied, every inch of standing room that can be used, and here come the Tigers out on the field on the run with the crowd giving them a great cheer. And the energetic and ambitious young Mr. Clifton who has played great ball at third base and in addition has hit many balls hard, although they haven't gone safe, is leading off. And they figure that he'll do better up there, especially against the left-handed pitching of Larry Frank. Good afternoon, everybody, and we're just about ready to start this sixth game. Tommy Bridges out there tossing a few to Mickey Cochran. We'll have a leadoff man from Chicago Cubs, Augie Gillan, standing here leaning on his bat just outside the left-hand batter's box. The weather today is the best we've had for all the games so far. The mild sun going in from center field, not bad. The sun is out, and I believe we have the largest crowd here also. Those bleachers were filled up long, long ago. Tommy has taken the ball from Geringer after Mike gave the long throw to second. Scraping the dirt off the rubber, he's out trying to win his second game of the series. And, of course, the Cubs want to carry this on until tomorrow is possible. The wind-up starts in the first pitch is over the heart of the plate for a call strike, bringing forth a lot of cheers from the local gentry. One strike is the count on Gillan. Tommy starts his wind-up again. Here comes the pitch. Curves one inside for a ball. Augie dancing away from the plate, and the count is one and one. Gillan so far is hitting 150 for the series. The next pitch, Gillan hits through the box. Bridges partly deflecting it. Rogel coming in front of the second base to throw him out at first. A pass hard smash right back to the box. Bridges partly deflected it. Rogel came in fast on the grass, picked it up and threw to Owen for the out at first. Bridges and Rogel getting a pitch. Owen the foot out. And here comes Billy Harmon, a right-hand batter, Cubs second baseman, carrying a batting average of 250 in the five games so far played. Bridges is ready, starts his wind-up, and the pitch is a little high and outside to the right-hand batter, ball one. One ball to count, one man out, nobody on first inning of the sixth game. The arm goes up in the motion. It is a fast ball on the outside corner, let her high for a tall strike. And the count is one and one. Herman stands deep in the batter's box with his right foot on the back line. He hits the slow curve, bounding it back to the pitcher's box. Bridges throwing him out at first for the second foot out in the first inning. Two men out, nobody on. And Chuck Klein, who entered the game as a pinch hitter the other day, then got in as a regular when uh, Freddie Lindstrom injured his finger and powered one yesterday into the bleachers for a home run and is carrying a nice batting average of 375. Left-hand hitter and a hard slugger. The first pitch from Tom is a little high and outside for the ball. Two men out, nobody on, first inning, and to count one ball on the batter, Chuck Klein, playing right field for the cover. Tom's arm goes up for the next pitch. A high spot foul over near the visitor's dugout. That's down around first base way, and Owen smothers it for the turn out. No run. No hit. No error. Three up and three away. Galan hit a hard smash back through the box. 
Bridges deflecting it to Rogel, who caused the runner out of first. Herman rounded a slow one to Bridges, who threw to Owen for the put out, and Klein fouled to Owen in front of the Cubs' dugout. So we go into the Tiger half of the first inning of this sixth game, and three Pistons, who have had no hits so far in the games he's been in, but has been playing a bang up game on defense at third base and making his first appearance. Almost his first appearance as a regular. He's been in a few games this year, but very few. The kid has shown plenty of what it takes. Umpire Ernie Quigley dusting off the plate a bit, although it appears rather immaculate from up here. Boys haven't gotten a chance to slide into there and get buttoned all over. Larry French, the big left-hander, who was charged with the defeat the other day as a relief pitcher in Chicago in the Cubs pitcher. And the first pitch is over the outside corner to Paul Strike. Clifton, the right-hand batter. And the next one. Clifton top throws it slowly to third. Stanley Hackman didn't make a nice pickup and throw to retire the runner at first. A nice play by the Cubs third baseman, Stan Hack. He had to take the ball over near the foul line in front of third base. It was a slow roller, and he did not dare lose any time, nor straighten up to make the throw, which was perfect in the full camera at his hand. One out, nobody on, and Mickey Cochran is up. Batting two to eleven. Left hand hitter in the first pitch is low, ball one. One ball to count, the arm comes up for the next one. That's right through the middle, fell high for a called strike. Now the count is one and one on right. One and one with one out, nobody on. The Cubs fail to get a runner on in there, turn it back. Cochran hits one in the left field, it's dropping safely. First hit of the day's ball game. Cubs hit manager Mickey Cochran of the Detroit Tigers when he slapped one out in the left field for a single. With one man out and Charlie getting her up. Charlie carrying around with a nice batting average of 368, which I believe leads all the regulars in the game. It's done. This box is next to 364. The fine lead. Having not been in all the games, the right field for the base. Cochran is pointing. Now he's coming back to second and is going to try for a third. Decided to stop. Then, when Klein momentarily fumbled, he made another break for third. But Bell Baker, coach, saw that Klein had already recovered the ball and waved Mike back to second. Runners on second and first. One man out. And Bruce Garzman, batting 294, is up. Had Cochran anticipated the sign would fumble momentarily, he could have easily made third. However, had he started after his pull-up at second, he would undoubtedly have been thrown out. But Chuck didn't take any time to recover. The first six to beat, a fastball over the outside corner for a called strike. Two men on, one man out. And one strike on Garvin, left-hand batter. French is ready, here's the pitch. Garvin pops one, an easy little looper to Billy Jurgis, the Cubs shortstop. Two men out. Cochran on second, Billy on first, and two spots, who is batting 364 is up. French looks over at first base, gets the sign then from Parkins. Turns around towards second. He's ready. Box fouled one in the dirt. There's a handle ball right in close to his thumb. The curve breaking into him. Coming from a left-hander and Fox being the right-hand batter. Broke right in on feet thumb. One strike. Two out. Two on. And French is ready. The next pitch. Fox hits down third base. Just over the Third baseman to handle. 
He managed to partly block the ball, but shoved it on over into foul territory, and it squirted out into left field. So uh, short and left that Gillan had to come far in to make the play, and that was why Geringer got all the way to third and crossed the second. Now we have Jerry Walker being given an intentional pass. Ball one. Ball two. Ball three. Ball four. G. Walker received an intentional pass to fill the bases with two men out and bring up Bill Rogel, who is hitting 250. Walker has been used as a pinch hitter twice and has failed to hit. The strategy of this, of course, is to create a play at any base. The two men down. Here's the first pitch to Rogel. He stopped the ball. He's slowly in front of the plate. And it forces Geringer at the plate on French's spot to Gabby Hart at the catcher. One run. Three hits. No error. And at the end of the first inning of play, the Tigers are leading the Cubs one to nothing. Come on in, Hal Dotton, and review that inning. Well, that inning made it look as though Tommy Bridges is starting off just where he left off the other day. And that is a very efficient young workman. In the first inning, one ball was hit hard. That was a smash by Galan. But Tommy floated up with a gloved hand enough for the Rogel to get over and get it in front of second base and throw him out. Herman then bounced easily to the pitcher and Klein hit a high foul, which was easy for Owen at first. However, the Tigers changed the tune. After Clifton grounded out, Cochran dropped the Texas leaguer and left for a single. During her first one through the infield into right field for another single, Cochran stopping at second. Then Goslin popped out, but Fox got up to his old trick of hitting doubles and hit one down just inside the left field line with tag nearly tagged. He scored Cochran and put runners on second and third. Walker was perfectly passed, and the strategy worked when Rogel tapped weakly to the pitcher, and the third man was forced at the plate. Now, here we go in the second inning. Tigers leading one to nothing. Take it, Ty. And Gabby Hartman is up. Bridges first picked the curveball, breaking over the outside corner for a called strike. Gabby bats some right-handed and keeps his right foot almost out of the batter's box, standing very deep the back line. The next pick curved away from Gabby for a ball. And the count is one and one. Hartman leading off in the second for the cup. Bridges starts his wind up. Here's the pick. Gabby swinging and missing. A swinging strike and the count is two strikes and one ball. Bridges was 20 fast with that pitch. Gabby has stepped out of the batter's box. Resting up a little bit after that swing. He sure took off on that one. Now he's back in again, and Bridge is blowing on his new hand, getting a little moisture on that hand to get the ball a little better. He starts his wind up. Here it comes. Fast one. A third strike. And if anything, is in that person. Right across the letter, they call third strike. One man out. And Frankie Demery is up. Demery batting 200 so far in the game. Is already played. That's the right-handed also. And Bridges starts his wind up. His curve is outside. Ball one. One ball is the count. One man out. Nobody on in the second inning. The Tigers leading one to nothing. The next pitch is fouled back. It was a fast ball. Frank was a bit under. And popped the netting. Strike one. Makes the count one and one. Tom takes a little time before delivering his new ball. He's got a little shape now. Throws the rubbers. There's the wind-up motion. Here's the pitch. Curve low and outside. Ball two. Two balls, one strike. One out. Nobody on. Again, Tommy flexes his right shoulder a little bit. Takes a stretch. Now he gets on the rubbers. He's wind-up. It's coming in, and it's a slow curve, a little high, ball green. Tom was trying to break that one down across the batter's shoulder. 
But it's time to think, and the count is three and one. Now we'll see what this one is. A high one would be hit high into the air in right field. Two boxes handling under it and has it. And Demery is retired on a fly to Fox in right field for the second put out of the second inning. Two men away, and Phil Cavaletta is up. Cavaletta is hitting the 100. Still went hitless until the uh, fourth game, I believe it was, with his health. Then he got two. Got two in that game. Left hand batter has been playing a 12 game at first base on defensive play. We just robbed up a slow curve for a call strike. The count is one strike on Phil. Tommy Sarge is wound up for the next hit. High and inside. Ball one. Cavalletta leading away from that fireball. And the count is one and one. Two out and nobody on in the second. There's the motion. Here's the pitch. Cavalletta hitting down fast on. Down that right field line. He's going around first. Fox is momentarily fumbled. The ball is coming into second. And Cavalletta is on second on an error. Charge. A hit and an error, was it? A hit and an error. Charge to Fox. Single for Cavaletta. Fox charged with an error in failing to pick up the hit in time to hold Phil to first base. The tying run is on second. Two men are out. And Stanley Hack. That's the left-handed. Plays third base for the Cubs. And is hitting 167 so far. Takes the first pitch for a call strike. Strike on Hack. Tommy's ready. Here's the pitch. Hack rounding the throw with a getting at second. Charlie has it. The throw is in Owen's hand. And Hack is retired at first. Getting her to Owen. Second to first. Leaving Cavaletta stranded on second. No run. One hit. And one error. Parker first up fan. Demery fly to Fox and right. Cavalletta singled pass on and took an extra base when Fox fumbled the hit. Hack into the sub half of the second, rounding out, getting it to Owen. All right, we're ready to go. Tiger half of the second with Marvin Owen still looking for his first hit in the series, leading off for the Tigers. Marvin's been tightened up and lungy. Now we'll see if he comes out of it today. The first pitch to call strike right through the middle. Bell type pitch that looks to be a Dundee from here. Letter high for the second call strike. He has Owen in a hole, two and nothing. Two and nothing. And here's the next pitch way outside for a ball. Looking Marv might go for that bad one. He can afford to waste a couple yet. With a count, two strikes and one ball. And strike up swinging. French broke a serve in there on the inside corner. This brings up Tommy Bridges, who is hitting 250. Tommy comes up slowly, gets quite a hand from the local audience. Tom is a great favorite here in Detroit, and pretty well liked, I believe, all around the circuit. French is using a nice, quick breaking serve and flips that one over for a called strike. One strike on Bridges, one man out, nobody on. Tom started to swing at that one, but I believe umpire Bernie Quigley will rule that he pulled his swing in time to keep from being charged with a strike. That is the ruling. It's a ball outside. Tom was going to go for it, figuring it was a curve coming in. He tried it with a fast ball, and there's a call strike. He came right over that outside corner, and the count is two strikes and one ball. French working very nicely. Two and one. The arm goes up in the motion. Bridges hitting the founder to second base. Billy Herman comes in fast and throws the runner out at first. Will Cavalletta cooperating there by making a sitting catch of a rather wild part by Herman. Bill had no chance to straighten up to aim that one at the throw from the ground. And there are two 
Tiger's out. Nobody on. And Steve Clifton is up. Looking for his first hit. Score one nothing in favor of the Tigers. A swinging strike. French is quite fast. And has a nice breaking curve. He's receiving the local batters. One strike on Clifton. The arm goes up for the next pitch and clean foul back and into the dirt. And against umpire Sigley's right foot for the second strike. Two strikes and nothing. Two men out and nobody on. There's the motion. Here's the pitch. Clifton waving at one of the side for the third strike. And French had no difficulty in retiring the Tigers in order in that inning. No runs. No hits, no errors. He took personal charge of Owen and Clifton to retire them one strike and charged Bridges to hit a slow bounder to Billy Herman at second. So the score at the end of the second inning of play is one nothing in favor of Detroit. The Tigers have made three hits and the Cubs run and take it away, Hal Barton. Within a few days after the World Series, the new Ford for 1936 will be introduced and will be on display at Ford dealers everywhere. Yes, both pitchers seem to settle down to the real groove in the second inning of this ball game. Cubs broke the ice in their first hit. In the second, the first half of the second one was two out. Cabrera hit one down the first base line. It was a little bit too hot for Owen to get to. And he went on the second base when Fox fumbled. However, Hatch was an easy out and a bounder to gain the end of the inning. And the Cubs had their first hit, but no run. One out in order to in their half, two of the three men striking out. And Cabrera making a good play on Herman's rather safety and wide throw to get Bridges in between the two strikeouts. And so the score is one or nothing in favor of strike going into the third inning, up the top, and come in time. And we have Billy Gregg at some short stop up, carrying a batting average of 250 so far in the five games played. Back to right handed. Bridges looks him over, starts his wind up motion. Here's the pitch. It's a pass ball missing the outside corner. Ball one. And he throws on his pitching hand again. And he starts his wind up motion. And here's a pass from outside. A little high also. Ball two. Two or nothing. Two or nothing on Gergen. Opening the third inning of play. There's the motion. That one cut the corner for a called strike. Bell five. Two balls and one strike. Gergen's leading off in the third. Tommy goes into motion, and there's a hit, a line single over second in the center field by Bill Jurgen. Sub short stop the second Chicago hit, and he hits that one 20. No chance for anyone to get in front of that one. This brings up Larry French, the pitcher, who, as we told you in Chicago, throws him left-handed and bats right-handed. Runner on first and nobody out. We'll see what the Cubs play for, sacrifice, or hitting it out. It's a sacrifice, evidently, because French shortened up, tried to bunch at him, missed it, and it's strike one. One strike on French. Third is on first. Nobody out. Third inning. Five is leading one to nothing. He made that one down. Foul. Right thin. We have to wait for umpire Sidney. As Cochran was standing about halfway out in front of the plate there with his bounders. Although it looks to me that it's hidden foul territory. That's as the play was called. That's two strikes on Larry Frank. Two or nothing. Nobody out. George is on first. Bridges is ready. And French took one, looked at it outside, ball one. You see whether he goes through with the third bunch or clean for the next one. That is two strikes and nothing. Two strikes and one ball, rather. He clears and fouls it into the dirt. And the count is unchanged. Two and one. Bridges has a new ball. He's rubbing the shine off of it a bit. 
Gets up on the wall and faces the batter again in pitching position. And here it comes, the swinging third strike. This is getting him on a high fashion. One man out. And Augie Gillan is up. Augie's a boy that hit the hard ball through the box. First time at bat with Bridges. Partly deflected to Rogel for an out of first. That bomb been unable to touch at the ball. He'd have gone through for the base hit. Augie bats from left-handed. Took the first pitch at ball strike. Over that outside corner. One man down, one man on. Greg is taking a bit of a lead. There's a toss to first. Keeping from getting too far away from the initial sack. Tom receives the ball from Owen again. Gets up on the hill. Looking them over. He's ready to pitch. Here it comes. A pass from outside. Ball one. That makes the count one and one. One out, one on. A lot of aces. Tom is ready. Here's the pitch. It's high and inside. For the second ball. A pass ball. Two balls, one strike. Two and one. Bridges throws the rubber. Here comes the pitch and it's high and inside for the third ball. Now he's in a bit of a hole behind the batter with a count. Three and one. Runner on first and nobody out. Hawkins has come up out of the start. Here it comes. It's a call strike at fastball. Right through the middle. And the count is three and two. Augie playing the string out. Three and two. Tommy gave him his Sunday pitch that time. A plenty fast ball. Breaking for second. Jurgis goes on the pitch as... Galan grounds to Geringer, hold over Charlie's hand, out in the short right field, and has scored a base hit, sending Gerges to third. A base hit for Galan, then third. Ball was hit well up toward first base. Geringer managed to get his gloved hand in front of it, could not stop it, and it scored as a hit. Runners on third and first. One out, Billy Herman is up, and the first pitch, a call strike. The Cubs are in a well spot here to tie the score. If Herman can get one safely, or even a long drive. Ball inside, and the count is one and one. Herman bats and right-handed. Tiger infield playing back, paying no attention to the runner on third. Playing back for a possible double play. With one man out and third and first occupied. The count is one and one on Herman. Bridges is ready. Looks around. Here's the pitch. Herman lined a hit over Geringer's head in the right. Here comes Gerges home with a tying run. And Galan is out at third. On a 12 throw from C spot. Backing into the scoreboard. One run. Three hits. No error. And it's all square at one run 
with two and one half innings played. Tigers coming to bat in the third. Dirk has opened the inning with a single. French, after trying to sacrifice unsuccessfully, struck out swinging. Gillan singled past Geringer, sending Jurgis to third. Herman lined a single over Geringer's head into right, scoring Jurgis with a tying run, but Gillan was thrown out trying to take third on Fox good toss to Clifton. Line into the inning, lining to Fox on the first pitch. Mickey Cochran is first up for the Tigers in the third, and the first pitch is a call strike on Mike. As French sent one over belt high through the middle. And the next one. Cochran fouled into the stand for the second strike. Souvenir ball. Down is two and nothing on Mike. There's a wind up. And it's low over the plate but low. Ball one. Two strikes and one ball. The side score of one and one. Third inning. There's the motion. Here's the pitch. Curve outside. Ball two. Two balls and two strikes. French gets the sign from Partridge. He's ready to go now. There's the wind-up motion. Coming in. Flying inside. Dusting Mike off. He drops to the ground to keep from being hit on the field with that one. And the count is now three and two. There's the wind-up motion. Here's the pitch. Cochran driving a foul out left field way. Gillan is going for it. So is Hack and Jurgis, but the ball drops to the ground and bounds into a field box. And the count just three and two. New ball coming into play. Tossed out by umpire Quigley to Hartnett, who in turn tossed it out to Phil Cavaletta, who was handed it to Billy Herman. Now handing it to Larry French while the... Augie Galland, the left fielder, Phil Jurg is the shortstop, and Stanley Hack, third baseman, finally get back to their position after their long cross-country run. French is ready. Here's the pitch. Cochran grounding to Cavaletta at first, who tosses to French for the putout. One out. And Charlie Gehring up. <laughs> Gehring are also singled in the first inning. Nobody on, one man out in the third. Score tied at one run. French is ready, starts his wind up. Here's the pitch. On the inside corner, a fast ball for a close strike. Larry gets the sign, doesn't waste much time. Starts his pump handle motion. And it's a ball strike also. Better high pitch on that inside corner. Makes the count two strikes on Gehringer. Two and nothing. French is pitching with good control. Broke the curve way outside that time. Ball one. Just to be expected he wouldn't lay a good one in there. For the count two strikes and one ball. The arm goes up for the next hit. Gehringer dropped one in the short left field. Galan is coming fast for it. He can't get to it. The ball drops to the ground just beyond him. And Geringer is safe at second on what will probably be scored a two-day pitch. The fly in short left field. It's a two-day pitch for Geringer. Gillan came fast for it. Couldn't get up to it. And the ball dropped dead at his feet. Charlie legged it around first and easily beat the throw to second. So we have Geringer on second. One man off, and Bruce Garvin, who caught the Bill Gergen the first time at bat, now up. Garvin goes back in a long foul out into the stands in right field. Strike one. He pulled that one too much, and it curved over into the stands. The wind is blowing toward the right field bleachers. Trumbull Avenue bounds the ballpark out that way. So if in the course of this game, any of us mention a ball being hit into Trumbull Avenue, that means it's over the right field wall. Swinging strike two, going for a pitch that was over the outside corner and low. And the count.
Getting her on second, one man out in the third. The score tied at one run. French is ready. Here's the pitch. Curve way outside. Ball one. It popped out of Gabby's glove. No damage was done, however, as Geringer is playing his face at second base. Mr. Hartnett has a habit of throwing very well to bases. And the boys respect that arm. Now there's two strikes and one ball on Leon Magoose Gargan. He has carrying a sack to off second. Mike has the ball straight and carrying a back to second. He's carrying the right back safely. And Gargan is on the way to first. And is out. Now Gargan has the ball and he's out. Carrying a return to second safely. Gargan had already gone down to second. And hustled back to first, but was thrown out with Bill Cavaretta to uh, act to Cavaretta. Act chased Charlie clear back to second without tossing the ball to anyone else. And when they found two men at one base, Geringer is the one entitled to it. Johnson had to break back for first, and French chased him a little more. Then finally tossed the Cavaletta for the put out. Two men out. Carrying her on second. Pete Fox, who drove in the winning for the first run, Raz, is the batter. And the first pitch is high and outside. Ball one. Two men away. Gehring her taking the lead off second. French is ready. Here's the pitch. Fox drove that one to left field. Augie Galan spreading his arms to wave Frank Demery away. Makes the catch, ending the third inning. No run, one hit, no error. And the score at the end of three innings of play is all square at one run. Come on in, Hal Cotton. Well, that third inning began to reflect that's the rather hysterical air of these two teams out here today. The Tigers within reach of their first world championship and the Cubs leading the game to stay in the run. Cubs tied to score in the third inning when Jurgis opened with a single. French tried to back five failed and struck out, but the land crashed a single off Gehring his glove into right field, putting Jurgis on third. Herman singled to right center, scoring Jurgis with a tying run. The land tried for third and slid in safely. He protested rather vociferously for a moment because the third baseman, Clifton, had hooked him off the bag after he slid in, but the umpire ruled that he was in there anyway, and so that's the way it stood. And then Klein pickled the first one to right field corner, but Fox went back nicely to get it to the third out. That made it one run, three hits, and one left. The Tiger half, they threatened again after Cochran grounded out. Daring her dropped the Texas League double and left, but he was got back to, safe, to second safely on Goslin's staff, but Goslin was out trying to get back to first, and then Fox slide out for the third out. And the score is still a tie, one and one, going into the fourth and he's up to bat, and here we go. And Gabby Hartnett is up. Bridges is ready, the first pitch to Gabby is a called strike. Tommy fanned him the first time up. And laid that one right through belt high for a called strike. Bridges starts his wind up again. Here comes the pitch. It's a fastball over the outside corner for the second called strike. Two and nothing. Gabby stepping out of the batter's box and looking at the plate. Now he's back in again. Count two and nothing. Tommy starts his wind-up motion. He hits that one plenty right through the box and over second for a single in the center field. Tommy tried to sneak that third strike over after having them two and nothing. Gabby was not to be fooled and hit that one right through the box and over second for a single. Of course, the fifth hit rather right off bridges so far while the Tigers have made four off French. Frank Demery is up. Frank slide to Pete Fox in right field the first time up with the right-hand batter. They're swinging, strike one. Runner on first and nobody out. Score tied at one run. It's a battle. Tommy rubs the shine off a new ball. Gets up on the hill again. Rushes the dust away from the pitching rubbers. Looks around to see that 
Parker isn't too far off the bag. He's ready to pitch. Little low. Ball one. And the count is one and one. One and one. Tom is ready. A slow bound is foul along third baseline for the second strike. Making the count two strikes and one ball. Parker's coming back from down around second base where he had gone on that when he heard the bat crash into the ball. Now he's back at first looking at Tommy. Tommy's looking over at him. He's on the rubber now ready to pitch. Here it comes. Another foul along third baseline. Going on over to the Tiger dugout. Bridge is pitching it in close to his hands and he's popping the pitches. Two strikes and one ball. Nobody out. Partner on first and the batter is Frank Demery. Sub center fielder. Bridges throws the rubber. And here's the pitch. High and inside. Frankie leaning away from that fashion. Good idea. Now two strikes and two balls. Two and two. Strike three calls. Bridges cutting the outside corner with a letter high pitch. One out. Partner on first. And Phil Cavalletta is up. Kid helped himself to his third hit of the series. First time at bat today. When he slapped one down first baseline. With Owen waved that as it went past. And then Fox fumbled, giving him an extra base. The left hand batter and swinging strike one. Bill put plenty cut at that one. He went around. Like the horse with the lavender eyes on the merry-go-round. Bridges is on the rubber again. Looking to the batter over. Here's the pitch. Cavarata popping in the air. Down near second base. Fire chief Billy Rogel is standing right at the bag to make the catch. Two men out. And Stanley Hack is up. Hack grounded the Geringer to end the second inning. Marquette is still on first. Hack is a left-hand batter also. Bridges blows on the pitching hand. Flex the fingers a bit. Now he's facing the batter and the first pitch is fouled back into the dirt. Strike one. One strike on Hack. Tommy takes his glove off and rubs up his new ball with both bare hands. Glances over to Hartnett. Gabby has a bit of a lead on and not holding him very close to the bag now, playing uh, rather deep for a left-hand batter. Strike two calls. Bridges served a very slow curve that time, but was considerably more than a wrinkle. And the count is two strikes. Again, Tom blows on the pitching hand, lifts in, gets a sign from Cochran. Mike comes up out of the crowd. The mid is up there for the target. It's a foul ball coming up here. It may come in. No, it just, you heard it probably, just it on the roof above it. So the count remains two strikes and nothing. And Bridges has to go to work with another new ball. Two and nothing. Two men out. Hartman on first. Bridges throws the rubber. He's in pitching position. They smash on the ground to Geringer, right at him, and the throw is on its way. Hack is retired at first. Geringer, two on, second to first. No run. One hit. No error. Hartnett opened the inning with a clean single to center field and languished on first while Demery struck out. Cabaretta popped to Rogel, and Hack grounded to Geringer. Score remains tied at one run with three and one half innings played and the Tigers come to bat in the fourth with Hugh Walker, Billy Rogel and Marvin Owen, the first three hitters but before they get up there we pause for station identification WMAQ, the Chicago Daily News Station This 
ball game is quite even all the way around. The Cubs have been at bat in four innings and have five hits and one run, while the Tigers have batted in only three innings and have four hits. There's the evening hit. Walker singling on the first pitch into right field. Hitting it on the ground between Herman and Cavaletta. That evens the hit. He receives an intentional pass the first time at bat. Rogel is up. Still ends the first inning by forcing Geringer at the plate with three men on and two men out. Prince takes his stretch. And the first pitch to Rogel is a hit. Hits the left field on the ground between Gerges and Hack. Shortstop and third base. Walker on second. Rogel on first. Both boys hitting the first pitch. Incidentally, Rogel is batting right-handed, of course, against the left-hand offerings of Larry French. He's a switch hitter, but would rather bat left-handed. The uh, Cubs bat boy is on his way out to the runway between the left field pavilion and the stand to order a Cubs pitcher to warm up. Marvin Owen is up. No hits so far. A hard bunch to third. Forcing... Rogel at second on hack. Good throw to Bill Gerges, the shortstop. Stanley played that ball perfectly. Coming in fast to take this punt from Owen. Took a quick glance. Saw that he had a chance for Rogel at second and made the play perfect. One out. Walker on third. Owen on first. And Bridges is up. Tommy is up there. He grounded the second base the first time at bat. Slow roller. Swinging strike on a low breaking curve on the inside corner. French had plenty on that. Stage is set for a double play. With second base, first and third being occupied, and one down. A curve of fastball way outside. And the count is one and one. One and one on Bridges, Walker on third, one man out. French is ready, here's the pitch, another pitch outside, ball two. Two and one is the count, two balls and one strike. French gets the sign from Hartnett, straightens up, takes his stretch. He's ready to go, here's the pitch. Bridges hit one on the ground. It looks like a double play ball, third, second, to first, cut by fast running bridges, keeps Herman's relay to Cavaretta, and is safe on a fielder's choice. Owen is fourth and second, Hack to Herman, Walker scoring, and with fast running, bridges keeps Herman's relay to Cavaretta, and is on first on the fielder's choice. Only one man out, Owen fourth and second, Third to second. Back to Herman. Two men gone. Bridges on first. Clifton is up. The pitch is low and outside to a right-hand batter. Ball one. French is ready. His arm goes up in the motion. Clifton rounding to shortstop. An easy chance. To Bill Gergen, who picked it up and crossed to Billy Harmon to force Bridges for the third out. Side retired on fourth out. One run. Two hits. No errors. And the Tigers are leading at the end of the fourth. Two to one. Come on, Hal Cotton. This broadcast of the World Series comes to you with the compliments of the Ford Motor Company and the Ford Dealers of America. Well, the fourth inning saw the Cubs make a rather futile gesture with Hartman opening with a single and he was still on first base 
when the next three men were out. In the Detroit half, however, the Tigers again went into the lead by one run. Walter open with a single to right, and Rogel also hitting the first pitch, single to left. Owen tried to bunt, but Hatch made a daring and perfect play to force Owen at second. However, Walker went to third. And then on Bridges' boundary, it looked for just a second as though they were going to get a double play, but the ball was hit slowly, and while the play was made perfectly, Bridges hustled hard and got the first base, allowing Walker to score to give the Tigers their 2-1 to one lead, which they now hold at the end of the fourth inning. We're going into the fifth, and here we go. All right, here we are with Bill Jurgis up. Owen front for throw Gallup second. Now, Billy Jurgis is up. He's had one hit and has scored the one sub run so far. He looks at the first pitch, which is low and outside. Ball one. One ball is the count. Jurgis the batter, leading off in the fifth inning. He hits back in plenty high into right field. Fox is waiting for it out there, shielding his eyes from the sun with his glove. He has it. One out. And French is up. Larry Fan, the first time at bat after trying twice unsuccessfully to punch to advance Jurgis around. One man gone. Larry is trying both ends of the bat on the plate to see the solid wood he's got up there. Bridges starts his wind up, and the first pitch is a curve ball over that outside corner for a ball strike. Ball came up there and then shot right over the corner. Tom goes into motion again, coming in. Fast ball outside, ball one, and the count is one and one. One out, nobody on. There's the wind-up motion. Here's the pitch. And it looks like a hit. It is a hit out in the right field on the ground between Geringer and Owen. For a single for Larry French. The sixth sub hit. And that makes the hits all even again. Six apiece. It's quite a ball game, boys and girls. Don't think it isn't. Runner on first. One man out. And Augie Galan with one hit and two times at bat is up. Hits him from the left side, and the pitch is low and inside to a left hand back. Ball one. Tommy nods his head. He's satisfied with what Mike is calling for in the pitch. And here it is. It's a fast inside ball. Ball two. Galan dropping to the dirt. Keeps him taking one in the ribs. The count is two and nothing. There's a stretch. Pitching from the shoulder with a runner on base. Strike called. He got the inside corner with a knee-high pitch that time, although Augie does not believe the pitch was where umpire Quigley saw it. And, of course, he's giving the umpire a bit of an argument while the crowd does a little blasting which the crowd is entitled to after saying the admission charge always. Foul strike back against the netting. But the real cut at that. And the count is two and two. Umpire Quigley dusts off the plate. And it is spotless. Two and two. One man out. French on first. And Frenchy Gallan is the batter. Bridges is ready. Here's the pitch. He fouled one off the end of his bat. Going over to the Tiger dugout. Manager Charlie Grimm coaching at third. Watch it roll over. Eldon Ocker receiving it. Tossing it out to umpire Moriarty, who examined it. He found the ball was a little bit lopsided, having connected with the end of Galan's bat. The count is two and two, and Bridges pitching a new ball, which is a called third strike. Cochran dropping it. Ball was right through the middle. Even Mike was surprised it was so straight. Two men out. French on first. And Billy Harmon with one hit and two times the bat is up. Bill is a right-hand batter. And stays far away from the plate. 
and deep in the batter's box to hit after the curve break. That one was not a curve, but a high, hard one inside. Ball one. Two men out, a runner on first. Ball one is the count. Bridge is ready. And a slow curve, a little high. Ball two. Two and nothing. Tommy blows on the meat hand. So he can get a better grip on the apple. Steps up on the rubber again. As the sign from Cochran. Mike is holding up the big mitt for a target. Here's the pitch. Another high pass. Ball three. And he's behind the batter. Three and nothing. One man out. French on first. Two men out, rather, and French on first. Nice call. He just aimed that one. There's nothing on it. Pitch came right through letter high. Count is now three balls and one strike. And Bridges is ready to deliver the next pitch. There's a drive that's going out into left field, going way out. It's in the bleachers, over the screen. For a home run, putting the Cubs in the lead. As French got home ahead of Billy Herman. That makes the score 3-2 in favor of the Cubs. He leaned against that fast ball with a count three and one. And it was a line drive over the screen, which is 20 feet high, in front of the bleachers in left field. In front of the bleachers, 300 feet from the plate. The ball was well tagged, my friend, well tagged. Bases are empty now. Line is up. The score, three two in favor of the Cubs. And the first pitch, a called strike on Suck. Buck fouled the next one, a slow curve over along first base line. And all the officers in blue he got that one. The count is two and nothing. Two and nothing, two down and none on. Bridges looks around, starts his wind up motion. Here's a pitch. Fine fouled another one. Over the same way. Enthusiastic box holder reaching out for that one. We should not do that. Out of two strikes, two or nothing. Tommy starts his wind up. Here it is. Ball hit in the dirt in front of the plate. Two strikes and one ball. Now there's two strikes and one ball, and there's a base hit for Klein, a line single into right center field on the ground, down near second base, too far down for Geringer. Walker throws the ball in, and Klein is on first with two men out. Gabby Hartman with one hit and two times the bat is up. The score, in case you've just tuned in lately, is 3 2 in favor of the Cubs, and we're playing the first half of the fifth inning of the sixth game of the 1935 World Series here at Maven Field in Detroit. Gabby is in there, ready to swing. Big, powerful right hand batter. Brian taking the lead off first. Here's the pitch. It's through the middle for a call strike. One strike on Hartman. Bridges throws the rubber, takes his stretch, pitches a high one outside for a ball, and the count, one and one. One and one. Ball two. Tom missed the outside corner with a fast ball, so it's two balls and one strike. in pitching position. The drive to left field. Garland is waiting for this lazy fly and has it. Two runs. Three hits. No error. 
Sergeant fly to right. Frank singled. Galan struck out. Herman hit a home run in the bleachers, scoring behind Frank. Fine single to center, and Hartnett fly to Carson for the third out. Take it away, Hal Hart. The National Broadcasting Company presents a special news bulletin from the Press Radio Bureau. Geneva, the Council of the League of Nations, has just adopted a report declaring that Italy has resorted to war in disregard of its government. The Council recommended that fighting stop at once. The report held Ethiopia not guilty of any act of aggression. Another bulletin from Geneva. The League of Nations has just taken the greatest step in its history. The Council has agreed to punish Italy for its invasion of Ethiopia. The 13 members unanimously bound themselves to apply economic and financial sanctions under Article 16 of the Covenant. They adopted the report of the Committee of Six, which accused Italy of resorting to war in disregard of its pledges. This bulletin is from the Press Radio Bureau. For further details, read your newspaper. And now come inside. All right, Mickey Cochran is leading off in the Tiger half of fifth. French just pitched him a wide ball. Mike now fouled that pitch, and the count is one and one. One ball and one strike. Cochran has one hit and two times at bat. The score, three, two in favor of the Cubs. French gets a new ball. He's ready to pitch. And did pitch a beautiful curve right over the heart of the plate, knee high. Making the count two strikes and one ball. Larry is deceiving the boys with that curve. Pass ball through the middle for a call strike. Mixes them up. A foul, a hook, and a fast one. And Cochran is called out on strike. One out, and getting her up. Charlie has had a single and a double and two times as fast. Grounder to Herman. He's coming forward. He has it. Throw is on its way, and Geringer is out at first. Herman to Cavaletta. Second to first. Two down. None on. And Goslin up. Goose has gone hitless in the two times he's been up. French is ready. Starts his wind-up motion. And the first pitch is a slow curve, just breaking outside. Ball one. Garland caught one right in front of the plate. Gabby Hartnett is walking out to make the catch, ending the fifth inning. No run, no hit, no error. The Tigers being retired in order. And taken away, Hal Cox. Well, at the end of the fifth inning, we find the Chicago Cubs ahead for the first time in the ball game, and French with a one-run lead to work on. In the first half of the fifth, Jurgis opened with a long fly to right, and then the French pushed one pass, going her into right field for a single. Galan walked the third strike close pass, but Herman, Billy Herman, ordered one pretty well up into the left field bleachers for a home run, scoring French ahead of him. Klein then followed with a line single to right center, but he was still on first when Hartnett flied out on a high one to Godwin. Made two runs, three hits, and one man left on base in the fifth inning. The last half of the fifth, Hartnett was called out on strike for Detroit. During a roll out to Billy Herman, and Goslin popped to Gabby Hartnett in front of the plate for the third out, and it was no runs, no hits. The result is that the Cubs now lead the Tigers by a score of 3-2 to two at the end of the fifth inning. The Cubs have made... Eight hits, and the Tigers have made six so far. And here we go into the sixth inning. Frankie Demery is up. Right-hand batter has had no hits in two times at bat. And the first pitch of Bridges is outside. Ball one. One ball is the count. Tommy's arm goes up for the next pitch. And it's a ball strike cutting the outside corner knee high. One and one. One and one on Demery. Demery is knocking the dirt out of his feet as he says a few words to umpire Quigley. Now he steps back into the batter's box. Bridges is ready to go. There's the motion. And the pitch is hit to the, on the ground. The shortstop, Rogel, coming up with the ball and throwing him out from deep short. One out. Nobody on. 
Navarretta is up. One hit in two times at bat. Score 3-2 in favor of the Cubs. Opening in the sixth inning. There's a wind-up motion. And Phil looked at one that broke low inside for a ball. One ball is a count. Bridges punches his shoulders. Takes a deep breath. Starts his wind-up. Ball two. Another low-breaking curve. Two and nothing. One man off. Nobody off. There's a motion, and the pitch is through the middle, a call strike. Bridges using the fastball that time, after failing to get Cavaletta to go for two curves that broke low. Pitch the fast one right through the middle, belt high. Up here in the sand, foul strike two. Let's it on the coping above our head. We haven't had a typewriter nor a telegraph machine wrecked so far in the series. We do much better than that in the regular season. The count is two and two. There's a wind-up with this nice new right ball, and it's fouled into the dirt, off to the left of the plate. Bill hitting it on the end of his bat, and umpire Quigley is going to take a look at it. After tossing Bridges a new one, see if this ball is damaged. It evidently is not, because the ball boy has been allowed to put it in the little cellar down here. And the count is two and two. Tommy starts his wind up with this nice new white one. Cavaretta following a slow curve into the dirt. Cubby, fat boy getting that one. Kneeling there with a recruiting batter who happens to be Stanley Hack. And the count remains unchanged, two and two. There's the wind up for the next pitch. Fastball outside, ball three, ball so high, three and two. One man out, nobody on. Bridges starts his wind up, here's the pitch, it's a slow ball, and it's a grounder to Geringer at second, the throw is on its way, Camavetta out at first, Geringer to Owen. Second to first, two out, Stanley Hack is up. Fan is grounded to getting her both times at bat. Left hand batter. And he's got them right down Charlie Dally. Here's the first pitch. And it's a fast one outside. Ball one. And the motion starts for the next one. Ball two. High and outside. Two and nothing. Score, 3-2 in favor of Chicago. The count, 2 and nothing. The drive to right is going safely out there for extra bases. Bounding against the scoreboard on the first hop. Fox is throwing it in. And we have Hack reposing on second base. A two-base knock into deep right field. There was no chance in the world for Fox to get in front of that one left here, we knew it was going for at least two or maybe three, depending entirely upon how the ball was rebound from the scoreboard. Found it perfectly for Fox to make a quick play into second base. So we now have Hack on second, two men out, and Jurgis is up. One hit and two times at bat. Goes the rubber. Bill hit one off the handle of Bounder over third base. Bag fifth and taking it. And tagging Hack as he was coming into third. Hack made a great duck to try to get away from him. Get it out of the baseline. And umpire Morey is explaining his tactics there. But he did not need to tag him when he ran out of line. So it does not matter as far as the scoring is concerned, whether or not Clifton tagged him, he was the man nearest to him and gets the put out. No run, one hit, no error. 
The end of five and a half innings played. The score is 3-2 in favor of the Chicago Cubs. And we pause for station identification. This is WMAQ, the Chicago Daily News station. Going into the Tiger half of the sixth, Keith Fox will be the first batter for Detroit, followed by G. Walker with Bill Rogel coming up. Frank is tossing a few to Hartman. There's a the long throw to second. The crowd is in very much of a hub-hub over that play at third. And they're still murmuring. Cheering now for a Tiger hit. Being a very local partisan crowd, of course. And the first pitch to Fox, they call strike. Over the outside corner, letter high. Fox pops that one into short left field. Augie Galland has no trouble getting under it and now has it for the put out. One out, and Walker is up. Walker walked the first time, singled the second time. One man out, nobody on. French raises his arm for the pitch and it's way outside, 4-1. Larry gets the sign from Hodges. The arm goes up in the motion. Walker top one, rolling it foul along third baseline. Strike one. Count is one and one on G. Known around these parts as the Mississippi Rebel. French gets ready to go. His arm is up in the motion. Walker pops. The fly to the center of the diamond. Bill Jurgis is waving everyone else away and comes in right beside the pitcher's rubber to make the catch. Jurgis, the tub shortstop. Two out. None on. And Rogel is up. Two men down, nobody on. And the first pitch is driven into left field. It's going close to the foul line. It's inside, however, for a ground rule double. A ground rule double deep into the left field corner. Dropped just inside the foul line, and a fan reached out from one of the boxes there to make a grab at it. The ground rule double deep in the left field corner for Rogel. Two men out, and Marvin Owen is up. Score 3 2 in favor of the Chicago Cubs. French takes a bit of time, kicks the dust off the pitcher's plate. Now he's up there in the hole, taking his stretch. And the first pitch is a single. His first hit of the series. Rogel is spinning around third base, coming home with a flying run. Marvin Owen, who has been the goal of the series, delivered his first hit. On the first pitch, a line single to left field to drive Bill Rogel home with a tying run. And the crowd here at Navin Field is in pretty much of a frenzy. Two men are out. And Bridges is the next batter. Jurgens. Talking to French out there, or Billy Herman, rather, talking to French out on the pitcher's mound. Now Herman has gone back to his position at second base. And the first pitch to Bridges is a swinging strike. Going for one across the letters. One strike on Bridges. The arm goes up for the next pitch. 
curve outside, ball one. One and one. One and one is the count on Bridges. Two men out, all and on first. Four tied at three runs. Swinging strike two. Tommy pulled away and swung it at him. Ball missing the end of his bat. Larry rubs the ball a bit. Takes his stretch. Or oh, takes a bit of a lead. Bridges struck out swinging. A low curve breaking in close to his feet. One run. Two hits. No error. And while this cannot, while it really resembles a cat and dog fight, it's a tiger and bear. It's quite an animal act, so take it away, Hal Totten. You're receiving this broadcast of the World Series with the compliments of the Ford Motor Company. Well, we're tied up again. What do you know about that? This series is one of the doggondest knockdown and drag out affairs I've looked at for years. In the first half of the six, Rogal opened by making a great throw on Demery's close at bounder to get him at first base. After Cabaretta grounded out, Hack doubled to the right field corner, but was out, tagged out at third base on Jurgis bounder down there to slip. There's some argument on that to remember, but umpire Moriarty with illustrations and gestures showed that the runner was out for running out of line as well as being tagged out. No runs, one hit. The last half of the six, Fox and Walker were easy outs on top slides, but Rogel came up with his second hit, a long double to the left field corner, and then Marvin Owen, saving his one and first base hit of the series for that one spot, drove in the tying run, scoring Rogel with a single to left. But Bridges ended the inning striking out, and we go into the seventh inning with a score tie, three and three. Here we go. Larry Francis first up for the Cubs. That one hit him two times at bat. Green single to right field the last time up. Bridges starts his wind-up motion, and the first pitch is high, ball one. One ball is the count, French is the batter. There's the motion for the next pitch. Way outside, ball two. Bridges is quite wild on these first two pitches. Cochran said something to him. Tommy nodded his head, yes. Blowing on his pitching hand. He's ready to go now. And Batson's in there. A call strike. Still five. The count two balls, one strike. The arm goes up for the next pitch. Swing, strike two, and Larry certainly swung that Batson right from the heel creek. Count is two and two. Two and two. There's the wind-up, and here's the pitch. Swinging strike three, going for a throw ball that time. One out. Nobody on. And Augie Gavan is up. One hit him three times at that. Cubs have one more hit in the Tigers. A total of nine is against eight. The score is tied at three runs, and the Tigers have made the only error. It's really a ball game. First pitch is a call strike on Gillan. Rich is laying it over the inside corner to a left-hand batter. And Tommy starts back for the next windup. Slow ball bounding to first base. Owen taking it on the second pop. Clamping on the track for the second foot out. Two out, none on. And Herman, who has been doing quite well with the willow. With a home run and a single and three times at bat, steps into the right-hand batter's box. There's the wind-up for the pitch. It's a hit for Herman, a single into left field, hitting it on the ground between Rogel and Clifton. Three for four for young Will. That's pretty good hitting. Anytime. Chuck Klein is up. Chuck has had a single in three times at bat. Two men are out, Herman on first, and the score square at three runs. In the opening half of the seventh inning. 
Bridges takes his position on the rubber, pitches a strike to Klein, a called strike. Cochran coming out fast, figuring Herman might break for second on the pitch. Klein has stepped out of the batter's box. Now he's back in again. Time was called momentarily. Bridges throwing the rubber, facing the batter. Klein dragged one to Owen. Owen scooping it up, stepping on first base to retire the runner unassisted. No run. One hit. No error. Bench first up, struck out. Gillan grounded to Owen at first. Herman single to left. And Klein grounded to Owen at first. So we go into the Tiger half of the seventh. The score all knotted at three runs. And we have Lee Clifton, first man up for the Tigers. Now that Owen has his first hit of the series, perhaps Clifton will garner his. He's looking for the first hit of the series. Thanks, first up, struck out. Gillan grounded to Owen at first. Herman singled to left. And Klein grounded to Owen at first. So we go into the Tiger half of the seventh. The score all knotted at three runs. And we have Lee Clifton, first man up for the Tigers. Now that Owen has his first hit of the series, perhaps Clifton will garner his. He's looking for the first hit of the series. Incidentally, this seems to be a good time while everyone is stretching here to remind the, particularly the local radio audience, that in case of a game being necessary for tomorrow, tickets will be placed on sale here at Navin Field immediately at the conclusion of today's game. Clifton is up, and the first pitch, a swinging strike. One strike on Clifton. The arm goes up for the next one. Clifton grounded the shortstop. An easy chance for Bill Gerges. He's out. Gerges to Cavaletta. Short to first. One out in the seventh. Nobody on. And manager Cochran is up. One hit and three times at bat. Low, ball one. That one just grazed the plate. The arm goes up for the next pitch. Swinging strike. Cochran going for a serve that broke away from him low and outside. And the count is one and one. With one man out. Nobody on in the seventh. Four all square at three runs. There's the wind up motion. Cochran driving one in the short center field. It's going to drop safely for a base hit. A single, a looping single to center for Mickey Cochran. One man out and carrying her up. Charlie has had two hits in three times at bat so far today. Brent takes his stretch. Foul back. Hit and run was on. Cochran was away with a pitch. Cochran comes back to first now. As Geringer waits outside the batter's box. Now he's in. Wentz has a new ball to pitch. Gets the sign from Gabby Hartnett. Fastball high. Outside. Ball one. One and one on Geringer. Four tied at three runs. We're in the eighth inning with Cochran on first. And one man out. Seventh inning. One on, one out. One and one on the batter. French stepped off the pitcher's rubber. Gets back on again. Cochran steps out of the batter's box. Geringer standing right on first base. There's a lot of skull work going on here. All right, we're ready to go. Gearing a pop on that pitch, an infield fly. Bill Camerata shouting for it. He has it halfway between first and the plate for the second out. And this brings up Zazen with no hit and three times the bat. 
not hard to get them on today, but it's hard to get them around. The deep steps in there, left-hand batter. He hasn't gotten the ball past the infield in three tries. There's one on the ground. The Billy Hammond playing out deep on the grass. He throws him out at first. And thus ended the seventh inning. No run. One hit. No errors. Score tied at three runs at the end of the seventh and take it away, Hal Cotton. Well, we're getting to the stage now with this five score and the late inning coming up that every time a man gets on base, it looks like the potential winning run and everybody is on it. In the first half of the seventh inning, after Clifton has grounded out, Cochran loops another one of those teasing little flies into center field for a base hit. But Gary will finish with a pop-up, and then Joslin grounded out for the third out. There's a no run, one hit. In the Tiger half, they waited for two out to get a man on base, or rather in the cup half, when Herman singles the left, but he was also out. And in their half, also it was that way. Within a few days after the World Series, the new Ford for 1936 will be introduced and will be on display at Ford dealers everywhere. Well, here we go, still at 3 and 3, going into the eighth inning. Up to start, first cup hitter will be Gabby Hartnett, the first time today that he has led off in an inning. The other time, he was the last man up. Gabby has one hit in his three times at bat. The single was just in the fourth inning, but at that time, he was his left stranded. In the second inning, he was called out on strike. And in the fifth inning, he ended the rally with a fly to Dodson in left field. The pitcher Bridges has finished his warm-up. Ball is thrown to second base. Hartnett steps into the batter's box. And so it's time for play-by-play on his side. All right, Alan. We're all ready to go. Gabby's in there waving his bat at Tommy Bridges. Tom rubs up the ball a bit. Throws the rubber. There's the wind-up. And the first pitch to Hartnett is a called strike, cutting the outside corner with a belt high pick. One strike on Hartman. And the next pitch coming playward. Outside, ball one. Count one and one. One and one. A player quickly leans over the plate, calls time for a moment. Well, Hartman stands outside. Now he's in. Here's the pitch. Ball two. Gabby almost went for a bad one that time, but pulled his swing just in time, and the count is two balls, one strike. Leading off in the eighth inning. There's the motion. Here's the pitch. Foul, strike two, up on the roof, out to the right. Over toward first baseway. Count two and two. One of these teams better get some runs pretty soon, unless they want to go into extra innings again. Now it's two and two, and the next pitch is hit a single in the left field, hit on the ground between Rogel and Christen for Hartnett's second hit of the day. That's the second time he has opened the inning with a hit. In the fourth inning he did that. The next three men were easy. We shall see how it turns out in this inning. Demery. Is up with Hartnett on first. Nobody out in the eighth inning in the score tied at three runs. That may be the winning run on first base. You never can tell. Demery bunts foul. Strike one. Up to playing for that one run, figuring that should be enough. One strike on Demery. Bridges gets a new ball, works with it a bit. Frankie steps out of the batter's box and rubs a bit of earth into the palms of his hands. So that will go well with the rosin on the handle of the bat. Steps in there, we're ready to go. Bridges blows on his pitching hand. Gets the sign from manager Stockton. Mike comes up out of the crowd. Here's the pitch. A grounder to Geringer. It looks like a double play ball. Geringer to Rogel. Rogel to Cohen. It is a double play. Geringer, Rogel to Owen. Erasing Hartnett and Demery. Two 
out. Nobody on. And Phil Cavarata is up. That ball was really a tailor-made double play. He did right at Geringer. All the cast had to do was pick it up and cross to each other and make it. Hit just hard enough to give them time. And the first pitch to Cavaretta, a slow curve on the inside corner for a call strike. Phil has had one hit and three times at bat. Bridges' arm goes up for the next one. Cavaretta leaning away from an inside pitch for the ball. And the count is one and one. One on one on Cavaretta. Two men out, nobody on in the eighth. There's the wind up for the pitch. Ball two. And Cavaretta leans away, comes halfway around with his body, and a lot of the spectators in the distant seats think he's striking at it. Now there's two balls and one strike. And here's the next pitch. He swung at that one and fouled it off the end of his bat to the fastball. Off that outside corner to a left-hand hitter, and the count is two and two. Bridges looks around to see that his outfielders are all out there in good shape. Blows on his pitching hand. Faces the batter now. Starts his wind-up motion. And here it is. Swinging strike. I think he fouled that one, evidently, because he did not move away. Cochran juggled it. You couldn't even hear it or see it from here, but it evidently was a foul ball because he's still in there. Mike made three grabs at it. As it popped around his glove, but it dropped to the ground. And the count remains two strikes and two balls. He struck him out swinging that time. Going for a low one. No run. One hit. No error. Hartness opened the inning with a single to left. Demery hit into an easy double play. Geringer, Rogel to Owen. And Cavaretta struck out. Swinging. So we have seven and one half innings played. And the score remains tied at three runs. Official attendance just announced 48,420 cash customers. Now we go into the Tiger half of the eighth inning. The first man up is Pete Fox. Fox had a double to left the first time at bat. And the last two times up has slid to Galan in left field. There goes one far out in left field foul. Going on the roof of the left field pavilion, then bounding down into the bleachers for a very long strike. Just a long strike out in there. For those of you who have been to Maven Field, it's bounded off the permanent left field exit. Foul strike two. That one is in the dirt. And umpire Ernie Quigley gets a great cheer from the crowd as he made a looping catch of that bounder. The umpiring in this series, we've noticed, the umpires have been very, very active. They're on top of every play. They run as fast as the players. Fox grounded to short right field between Cavaletta and Herman for a single. He had a slow bounder down there. Cavaletta was a bit bewildered, did not start for it, then turned and started back to first, thinking Herman might come up with a ball, but Billy was playing down to it, toward second with Fox, a natural left field hitter at bat. So Peter's on first as a result of his single, and G. Walker with one hit and two official times at bat is up. Also a right-hand batter. Walker bunted in front of the plate, a sacrifice, and is out, Harknett, 
to Herman, who covered. Advancing Fox to second. Tigers are playing for one run also. Fox on second, one out. Will Rogel with single and a double and three times at back. Here's the hitter. Score is tied at three runs, and we're in the eighth inning, the last half of the eighth. High and outside, it looks like a palpable pitch-out. I believe Hartnett calls for that pitch-out with the evident intention of tossing one down to second to... tossing one down to second to... six feet Fox off. However, no throw was made as Fox did not take much of a lead. Swinging strike. Nice curve that broke right in there to Bill. And the count is one and one on Rogel. Hartman has pulled Chuck Klein into a short right field position and swung Frank Demery over into more into left center field. Out near the screen in regular left field position for a right-hand batter. Rogel fouls down first base way. Strike two. Now there's two strikes and one ball. Bill was trying evidently to push that one down there in the rather untenanted part of right field. With the toward center, shallow. It would have been a good place to punch one. However, Bill to pitch. Just a foul strike and the count is two strikes and one ball. Bench is ready. There's the stretch. Here's the pitch. Swinging strike three. And Fox is retired for the second out in the eighth. Uh, Rogel, rather, with Fox still on second. Marvin on. Got his first hit. In the sixth inning, to tie the score is now up. First hit of the series. They're going to give Horn an intentional base on ball to bring up top bridges. Ball one. Ball two. Ball three. And ball four. Now the Tigers have Fox on second, Owen on first, and Bridges is up. Bridges is the batter with a score tied at three runs, two men on and two men out. Outfielder's moving in a little close now for Tommy, who is not expected to hit one hard. He has fanned once, rounded the second, got on on a fielder's choice. Swinging strike. He forced Owen at second in the fourth inning. Hitting one to third base. One strike on Bridges. And the next pitch, swinging strike two. French serving one in close to his feet. Two and nothing. One thing we've always noticed about Tom in the regular season, and that is that he goes down swinging as a rule. When he goes down, he's up there cutting at them. French takes his stretch. Here's the pitch. Strike three called. He puts that one over the outside corner. Swung at the first two and looked at the third one. French retiring him on three pitches. And we have no run. One hit. No error in the eighth inning. And go into the ninth with a score still tied. That's three runs. Take it away, Hal Cunt. The broadcast of all the World Series games have been sent to by the Ford Motor Company, builders of Ford and Lincoln cars and Ford trucks, Mr. Henry Ford, Mr. Edsel Ford, and your local Ford dealer. The new Ford for 1936 will soon be introduced and will be on display at Ford dealers everywhere.
Well, in that stint, eight innings, both teams started off identically, but finished up a little differently, although neither score. In the cup half, Hartnett opened with that single to left, but was cut down on the front end of a double play, Demery being the second out. Severett had been struck out. In the Tiger half, Fox opened with a single to right, sacrificed the second by Walker, then Rogel struck out, Owen was perfectly passed, and Bridges was called out on strike, ending that inning with four still a tie, three and three, and here's the big ninth, and come in time. Stanley Hack is first up for the Cubs. He's had a double in three times at bat. And the first pitch is low and inside. A left-hand batter. Ball one. Bridges starts his windup. Here's the next pitch. It's hit out into center field deep over Walker's head. And that's going for three bases or possibly a home run inside the park. The relay is coming into Geringer. And it's a three-base hit opening the ninth inning by Stanley Hack. The Cubs third baseman keeps in that center field corner high over G. Walker's head. That ball was tagged plenty. The Cubs ought to get a run here. Runner on third and nobody out, opening the ninth inning. The next man up is Bill Jurgis. One hit and three times at bat. Infield playing in, of course, to cut this run off as possible. A call strike on Jurgens. Bridges curving one over the outside corner. Boy, this fella Hack sure tied into that one. He teed off. And the next pitch, Jurgens swung it a low one for the second strike. Count is two and nothing. Two and nothing. Nobody out. And Hack on third. Bridges gets the sign from Cochran. Gets on the rubber and starts his wind-up. Here's the pitch. Swinging strike three. A curve which broke away from him. One out in the ninth. And French is up. Larry French, the pitcher. He's coming up there after getting a bit of rosin. On his hands, the better to grip the bat. He's had one hit and has fanned twice. All right, we're ready to go. And the first pitch, he steps out and swings, strike one. Hack was halfway home, running up on the pitch. Looks as though they might have been going to have a squeeze play here to get him home. Still may have it. You never can tell. There's the wind-up. Swinging strike two. And the count is two and nothing on French. Two and nothing. One man out. Hack is on third. Bridges gets his time, takes his time, his arm goes up in the motion. Here it is, a grounder to Bridges. He thrusts the runner back to third, then throws the batter out. For the second out. Easy bounder right back to the box. Bill Rogel patting Tommy on the back. And now the Tiger infield can back up. With two men gone. And Augie Galan is up. Augie has had one hit and four times at bat. Single in the third inning. Left-hand batter. And Hack is still on third. With his arms folded now. Here's the first pitch to Augie. Almost a wild pitch. Cochran saving Bridges by making a great stop. For that ball which hit just in front of the plate. Mickey staggered all over the plate, kicked dirt on it, and umpire Bill Quigley has just dusted it off. One ball. Bridges takes his time. There's the windup. And here's the next pitch. They drive into short left field, and Goslin comes in for the catch. One hit. No error. Hack 
opened that inning with a long triple over Walker's head into deep center field and remained on third base while Bridges fan Gerges French grounded to the pitcher and Gillan ended the inning with a fly to Bosman in short left. The score still tied at three runs and we paused for state and identification. This is WMAQ, the Chicago Daily News Station. Here we go into the Tiger half of the night. We've seen real baseball drama in that half. The first pitch is a call strike. French cutting the outside corner. The crowd is still... Very noisy over that exhibition of Bridges pitching. Ball inside. The count is one and one. One and one on Lee Clifton leading off in the Tiger half of the night. He fouled the next pitch into the dirt. Strike two. Count is two strikes and one ball. and one. French starts his wind up for the next pitch. Outside and high. Ball two. Two and two. Larry gets the sign from Gabby Horton. Brushes the dust away from the pitcher's rubber. His arm goes up in the motion. Clifton fouled into the upper deck. Off first great base wave. And there's a scramble for that apple. Count remains two strikes and two balls. French starts his wind up for the next pitch. Ball three, outside. Three and two. Three and two is the count. There's the wind up. Here's the pitch. Clifton struck out to open the ninth for the Tigers. The seventh strikeout for French. Twice he's gotten Clifton. And when Bridges fan Jurgis in the ninth, it marked his seventh strikeout victory. <laughs> Next man up, Charlie Geringer, hits a single off Billy Harmon's glove. Down near second base. I'm pretty sure they'll call that a single. It was a very hard chance. Or Mickey Cochran, rather. He went way down near the sack. And it's a hit. Watching the score there. Cochran's third hit of the day, and here comes Geringer with two hits in four times at bat. Each pitcher has struck out seven men so far. It is a real ball game. Ball one, way outside to Geringer, the left-hand batter. Over in the right-hand batter's box is where Hartman took that pitch. French gets the sign. He's ready to go. There's one man out in Cochran on first. Ball two, another curve outside. Two and nothing. Two and nothing on Geringer. The Cubs have 12 hits from the Tigers' 11 so far. There's a stretch. Score is tied at three runs. Geringer hits on Camaretta, who threw late second base after stepping on the bag to retire Geringer. But his throw down to second failed to get Cochran. Cochran is on second with two men out. Geringer out at first. Camaretta unassisted. On a hard smash down the first baseline. Still knocked the ball down, then picked it up. Stepped on the bag and threw to second base, trying to get Cochran. Nick is in there safely. 
And Bruce Johnson is the batter with two men down in the ninth. And the winning run on second. Bruce will be given a pass, I imagine. Can't tell yet, but I think Gabby Moses that way. Pulling Augie Galan in a little bit in left field. Maybe they'll pitch to the goose. He hasn't gotten one out of the infield today. We shall see in just a moment. French, after getting ready to pitch, steps off the rubber a moment. Cochran taking a lead. All right, we're ready to go. Here's the pitch. Garvin fouling that first one down first baseline. Strike one. They're pitching to him. There's no walk here. One strike on Leon Goslin. Crowd is in a continuous uproar. Time is being called for a moment here while Larry French is rubbing the shine off his new ball. Here we go. And next pitch, Goslin. down. The umpires didn't even bother to say they just began to run before even the ball had hardly got to the ground. Uh, the paper is beginning to litter all over the place, just like uh, snow, shall we say. The crowd is rushing right down here in front of me. Most men, women, and they're all crowding around the Tigers dugout. It looks like a complete mad mob. I'm trying to lean over the the uh, press box here. It's right on the very edge of a cliff, looking right down on top of everybody else. And my two assistants, Hal Thompson and Ty Tyson, have gone down to the dugout to these two teams to try and see if they can get these boys on the air for you. But nevertheless, I've never seen such a crowd. Have you ever seen, uh, have you ever been like a child on the beach in the sand? And you build up a great big pile of sand and you dam it up with a little wall. Then you break the wall and you watch all the sand flood right out onto the level space right in front of you. Well, here are all these people flooding out from that great enormous stand in the left field bleachers. Color, green, pink, red, brown, everything you can possibly think of. They're walking all over the place. They're walking little tiny figures. Have you ever played with toy, toy soldiers and you move them all over the ground and uh, you have a little brown, green patch of ground and you've seen all these people flooding to one spot. Well, they're all making out of this one stand and racing down here to the Tigers' dugout who have brought for the first time in the uh, history of baseball of Detroit baseball, anyway, at Bandon Since 1887, and think of what this town is going to be tonight. It's the most amazing thing that you've ever seen, and of course you've listened to the, the game, but the tension has been terrific. It's been a ding-dong battle all the way. First, in the first inning, Detroit got one run. Just a minute, I see that all these people, a lot of them are flooding out through the other gates. There's some people are running out there, they, they, seem, they think they've had enough. But first of all, Detroit got one run. And then in the third inning, Chicago tied that, tied that up. Now, that was 1-1. One, one. And then in the uh, fourth inning, I'm reading from the scoreboard, Detroit got another run. So that made 2-1 to one in favor of Detroit. And then in the fifth inning, Chicago came right back and hit two runs. So consequently, that was one up to Chicago, and they led with one run. On the sixth inning, they, they Detroit tied it up again, and there it stood. Even until this extraordinarily, very, very dramatic ninth inning. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, let me read you the 
I made a lot of notes while we were going along. Oh, this crowd is perfect. It's terrific down here. They're just milling and shoving and trying to push their way into the Tiger's dugout, but there are police down there. They're trying to hold them back. And there are people even standing on the roof. There's one man trying to climb in upside down from the roof. And there are women walking there, too. And there's one man trying to help a woman to get over the top. But uh, there doesn't seem to be much success, and the crowd is dividing part of its time between watching this woman trying to get back again and the players. One or two of them. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just a moment. Which dugout do you wish me to send you to, to the Detroit? Well, Ty Tyson, ladies and gentlemen, is down at the uh, Detroit dugout, so let me switch it down there to you. All right, Ty, take it away. Uh, this is Ty Tyson down in the Tigers dressing room, and where we have manager Mickey Cochran and Goose Garland. First of all, manager Mike is going to talk to you just briefly while I get a hold of Tommy Bridges. Nice time. Hello, everyone. All the fans just the happiest day of my life. It's probably the most sensational and thrilling World Series that has been played in some time. It certainly was the greatest thrill of my life when I stepped across that home plate with old Goose, a wild boy from Salem, New Jersey, single to right. Thanks. I want to congratulate Charlie Grimm and his Cubs. They have a great ball club, and it was a real championship series. Here's Goose Garden. Thank you very much, Mickey. Here's Goose Garden, who drove Mickey across with a winning run, a $2,000 run. Hello, folks. Uh, the Cubs are a great ball club, and, and uh, I was uh, more thrilled in this game. I think I uh, felt like everything uh, depended upon winning this game. And the, the Cubs is a good young ball club, and everybody said they weren't so hot, but we found them very hot. Thank you. Thank you very much, Goose Garden. Tommy Bridges is coming up here right away, the winning pitcher who won both the games that he started in this World Series for the Tigers. Here he comes with Hal Totten throwing him up, smoking a cigarette. He's in his undershirt, but he's very happy to want to say something, Tommy. Hello, everybody. Everybody's pretty happy around here right now. Okay. There's entirely too much confusion going on here for anything more. The boys are starting their pennant winning and World Series winning jollification. So this is Ty Tyson turning it back upstairs to Bolt Carter. Well, here we are back again upstairs in the press box, and thank you, uh, Hal, and thank you, Ty. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that I would like to add my word, if I may, to the extraordinarily good work done by uh, Hal Cotton and Ty Tyson. And uh, may I send, you, uh, send this report once again back to uh, Hal Cotton, who's got something else to say to you. Take it away, Hal. Oh, he's not quite, uh, he's not quite ready. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we're... We're all the way down in the dressing room, right at the bottom of the stadium, and we're all the way up here, and we've got to work this business by engineers all over the uh, line. All right, it's going down now. All right, take it away, Hal. He hasn't even said no or even backed away from his microphone. First, I want to introduce you to the grand manager of the club, Charlie Grimm. Charlie, how do you feel? I started feeling disappointed, of course. Well, I feel disappointed, of course, but I feel happy that we were beaten by a grand ball club. And my ball club is also a grand ball club. It's Cup series all the way, and uh, I think it was very evenly matched. It's just a matter of who could get one more run than the other ball club, and that's the ball club that won. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you very much. And now, Charlie Hartnett said he'd come over here, and uh, Charlie, you want to find me off? He's moved in the shower by now. In the meantime, Lon, Lon, come here a minute, will you? How do you feel about this ball club to beat you today? Well, I think they won the best ball club I ever saw. And I think uh, we battled them. We gave them the best battle that the uh, people in the World Series have seen in the many a day. And so I uh, only hope that we get to play them again and another one next year. Well, thank you, Lon Warnke. And here is Gabby Hartnett, the chapter of the Cubs. Leo, what have you got to say about this? Well, folks, you know, anybody hates to lose, and I'm a Cubs loser. But you've got to give the Detroit Tigers a world of credit because they're a great hustling ball club. And also a world of credit to their leader, Mickey Crocker. Thank you, Leo. Thanks a lot. I would like to uh, get Larry. If, uh, I know Larry thinks feels terribly about it all. And I'd like to get Billy Herman tap. We're trying to round him up. The Cub players are mostly around here in the mood, as we might say. Several of them waiting around the rubbing table. And Dr. Andy Lodshaw is rubbing one of you. Here's Billy Herman over here. Bill, come here a minute, will you? Billy Herman's the boy that hit that home run that shoved the Cubs ahead today, and they held that lead for a little while. Bill, how do you feel? I think that the Detroit Tigers are a good ball club, but I think they beat a better ball club. 
<laughs> that's the old seven, sir, that keeps him going. And uh, I don't know if Larry is still over there in the uh, showers or not. Larry is in the showers. I know he doesn't feel much like talking, but uh, sometimes I'll come over and do that. Woody, come here a minute, will you? Here's the captain of the Cubs, Woody Ingram, the boy who uh, is captain and does most of the backing up. He's the boy that fills the holes in the time. What do you got to say, Woody? That was a great series. I think the team that got the breaks won. Pretty even in match, both of them. Thank you. It was a good series, wasn't it? And now, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've just about exhausted the number of boys who will talk here. The dressing room isn't downhearted, and yet they're not cheering naturally. And we hope you've enjoyed what it is. And now we will turn to Bill Carter up in the booth. Back upstairs, ladies and gentlemen, in the press box with Bill Carter. And I'm looking down over here as the uh, people right down below the Tigers' dugout. And uh, I think they're trying to wait for the Tigers, the victors, to come out. And if they ever do, they're simply going to get mobbed. They're probably somewhere about five to 6,000 people jammed so tight. I've never seen people jammed like that before in all my life. And there's one uh, wag who's standing on top of the, uh, the uh, Tigers' dugout on the roof uh, giving cheering signals. And these four people jammed tight together trying to answer him. And they're swaying to and fro. And let me also add, if I may, what I was going to say a minute ago. The splendid work done by Harold Tyson and, uh, and uh, Ty Tyson and Hal Top. They've been up here every day covering this game, day after day, and it's an awful tough job with all these people here. And my hat's off certainly to them. You have received the broadcast of all the World Series games with the compliments of the Ford Motor Company. The sponsors will be amply repaid if you have enjoyed these broadcasts. And we congratulate the winners, the Detroit Tigers World Champions for 1935. And also compliments the Chicago Cubs for the outstanding brand of baseball played during the entire series. And we wish them both a successful season in 1936. In the meantime, watch the Fords go by. And this is both Carter signing off from Navy Field, Detroit, and also for Hal Totten and Ty Tyson. And so we will now return you to our studios. <laughs>